why the sponge is able to flip while the spoon sinks to the bottom. Well, it's actually quite simple. This principle can explain everything. The principle was named after Archimedes of Syracuse, the man who first discovered the law. Any floating object displaces its own weight of fluid, and any object only or partially immersed in a fluid is pushed up by a force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. So, my boy, the sponge is able to displace its own weight in, web, in water, thus able to float. Oh yeah, I think I remember something about this. Archimedes' principle is also called buoyancy. Exactly. And the reason this thing sinks to the bottom is because the volume of water displaced does not weigh as much as the spoon itself. Correct! Now, the math behind this lies in the properties of a fluid and an object. The specific gravity of the fluid times the volume of the fluid displaced equals the buoyant force. If the buoyant force is greater than the weight of the object, then the object is going to float. If the buoyant force is less than the weight of the object, then of course you would think that it would sink. If the buoyant force, however, is equal to the weight of the object, then the object will sort of have a neutral buoyancy, where it will neither sink nor float. Oh, kind of like a submarine. Submarines, on the other hand, can control their depth, which means that they must be able to control their buoyancy. Now, like a ship, when a sub is on the surface, it is positively buoyant, weighing less than the volume of water they would displace if fully submerged. Correct again! Submarines have ballast tanks, which can be filled with water or pressurized air. The ballast tanks are filled with water to submerge, and are filled with air to surface again. And by using the right combination of air and water, the sub is able to achieve neutral buoyancy. I think I'm starting to understand buoyancy a little bit better now. Well, that is why I'm here. Whoa. Maybe, I don't know.